Hi everyone, I'm Autumn Flame, and today we're going to be talking about the new Mass Effect IP that has been discussed, which could potentially be a Mass Effect 3 remaster, but also potentially I would like to see a Mass Effect Andromeda sequel. So today we're going to discuss a little bit about things that I'd like to see from a Mass Effect Andromeda sequel in the games 2 and 3, and discuss a little bit about story-wise where we'd like to see these story go and things I'd like to see that I think would be interesting for the story to improve. So with that, so for the second game we've been broken up into three acts where we have the intro is a flashback to the Pathfinder finding and securing the Quarian Ark, a few missions there to deal with getting it shipworthy, dealing with the infection etc etc to bring it back to the Nexus. Then jumping forward to months after defeating the Archon and securing Meridian, the Pathfinder finds him or herself dealing with a lot of local politics and newly opened worlds that have been terraformed due to Meridian. The Turians, Asari, Salarians, Quarians, Girl, Hanha, Elkor, etc. have all taken at least a base homeworld. Alternatively, there's still a lot of arguing over who should get what planet and arguing needs of food, security, everything coming on there. The planets now would have multiple resources and strengths to consider, such as minerals, water, scientific scores, military score, peace score, logistics score, which each of these having different benefits due to different races, and uh, say a new race comes along and they see a high peace score, would be more likely to believe the Andromeda here is not an aggressive one, while a high military score will help protect against Ket incursions. Each race having predisposition to planets that would like and the needs that they have, and you spending quite a while balancing favour with the races and trying to make sure everyone is happy with the things that they receive and the growth of the race as a whole. To com show this, I think a star chart logistics page, sort of similar to the Dragon Age Inquisition War table, would be something nice in order to manage it, where quests would pop up and to resolve. Um, disputes and things like that so we could feel like we're progressing and increasing the logistics of our area. Massive investments into the Scourge and Remtech in order to work out how we can either destroy the Scourge or make ourselves immune to it or control the Scourge so we could fly a ship in, proceed it, fly through it and then close it back up in terms of security. But for the meantime, the Tempest would have a shield upgrade that allows the ship to traverse the Scourge without taking any damage and working out how to make it so Remtech no longer tracks the Scourge. And as I was saying, the work continues into either destroying mass immunity or manipulation and each side having pros and cons for its development, different races having different opinions about what they would like and each of that weighing in on the needs of each planet while the threat of the Kets still remain and heavier cruiser, fighter, bomber, capital ship production starts on. Taking us into Act 2, time progressive and the initiative is able to leave the local cluster and start exploring further and crisis events will occur with the initiative staff encroaching upon other territories of new races or those races finding the initiative on their own ability and each of those races having new needs and threats and things come in with that and each of them having their own pros and cons depending on how you help them. During this time we would find many tribes of Lost and Gara to bring back into the fold of the main groups and finding I have suggested maybe between two to five races and I've listed down five potential races here with race one being a generally peaceful technologically advanced society with an affinity for tech and biotics. They see the Scourge as a holy entity and do not wish it destroyed. Ship immunity and limited control and manipulation of the Scourge is acceptable by them and they're willing to ally with the initiative if the Scourge is left alone to exist. If it is destroyed then they will not ally with you at all. They are at odds with race number two which is an aggressive militaristic and survival sort of race, sort of similar to a Krogan in a way. They want the Scourge to be, to do, be destroyed so they can make conquest and exploration possible for themselves since they don't really have a lot of good tech. We'll join the initiative with the promise of the Scourge being destroyed and acknowledging the, if they acknowledge the initiative's strength, otherwise they may try to seek and bully them. And they are at odds with race 1 and won't be willing to partnership with the initiative if partnered with race 1 
all and calling for them to be utterly destroyed due to some ancient disagreement back in the past and they won't be willing to compromise on that at all. Race 3 would be a biotically focused race of artisans, poets and craftsmen, things like that. Potentially high combat power but they're very pacifistic and not wanting to get involved in the greater politics but they're happy to share art and culture upon the nexus. Race 4 being a machine race, a nanoparticle composite intelligence similar to the replicators from Stargate or things similar to that if you've ever seen a lot of sci-fi and they seem generally peaceful but they do have a habit of consuming new species and worlds and things for fodder for new materials so that would be a careful management of them to control them from not leaving their system now and then devouring new technologies and increasing themselves and causing trouble. The fifth race we would find would be the true Ket, a variant of the Ket that did not submit to the ancient genetic manipulation and the cause of the sterilization of their race which makes exaltation needed. You would gain insight into the Ket enemy, their motives and why they're acting as they are and this race is a very peaceful race. And for that point we'll be managing politics, resource management between all the existing races and the new races and factions within that and to balance out military support, strength, tech advantages and all these things. So we'll spend a lot of time on not just combat but the backside of war. By the end of the chapter we will have the entire sector filmed out and ready to go and the advancement either destroying or manipulation is cluster wide and the fight prepares to fight the cat back in their homeworld. Act 3, the initiative leaves the cluster and find the cat and start on a war footing. They discover the cat empire is bigger than they could have imagined and it might be a simple though even with the massive remnant armies and allied forces. It's discovered the Archon was corrupt with power and wanted a higher station within the Ket court but couldn't gain it normally and sought to use Viridian to speed that up. There are many factions of Ket with different wants and needs and alliances and the first one that we meet are generally the most peaceful giving one and the weakest out of the lot but they also believe that exaltation is a choice and never to be forced upon anyone such as what the Archon chose to do and people may choose to become one with them if they wish. And with allying with this faction, the war commences in the third act and the second game stopped there. So we leave on a bit of a cliffhanger. Moving into Mass Effect Andromeda 3, we start off on a war footing. We have in management of war assets, tech growth, battle strategy, and key for managing planetary fights along with cluster dominations. And we have crisis events and critical events happening where we take out factions of Ket and some realizing that you power the initiative and submitting to you to try and gain better status within the new empire that they see you creating. Other Ket will prefer just to die to the last man rather than submit to the initiative. And eventually you're faced with the largest and most aggressive branch of the Ket that are in control. They're a little better than the Archon in terms of goals, but not by that much. And through a long attrition war, both sides taking casualties and the initiative eventually coming out the victor in terms of a ideal victory. But upon that, we also would love to see some additional endings. And here I've crafted five alternate endings that could also happen if we don't want to just have we win ending. So we'll have potentially a very paragon ending of peace is achieved with the races living in a somewhat harmonious existence. The surviving cat races exalt only the willing and never by force. The races form a new nexus council with representatives to debate things in a democratic style for the betterment of all. The second ending being more of a renegade. The initiative took a, a position of strength, aggressive standpoint in leading the initiative initiative being the dominant power in the system with the other races in fear or contempt of the initiative's power. This would lead to a subjugated cat or outright destruction of all of them down to the last being. Conflict and war would sometimes break out as the races try to break from the initiative's control and influence, but generally the initiative has the strength in order to keep them in line. A third ending being 
the initiative wins but at a great cost, leaving them in a weakened state and susceptible to betrayals either from kept factions or their machine race who would start forcible exaltations or consumption of things that they didn't want and new races would try and take over and start new bit of civil wars. A fourth ending being the utter defeat at the hands of the kept. All Andromeda initiative races are exaltated and the kept control Andromeda and set their sights for the Milky Way. And five, neither side gained enough advantage to win the war, leaving a stalemate and a continual war for a few generations. Potentially at the end of this we could have a hook for a net, uh, second trilogy, being that due to having the war uh, controlled scourge and whatever else effects of the war going on, a new unknown enemy either can leave their home world, are awakened, are constructed, or some form leave their homeworld and they are equal or greater than the Reapers in threat and a new fight prepares itself with allied or enemy factions being forced to band together to face this new threat. So based on our endings, number one would have the best option for probably starting off in terms of having enough people to help. Two, you would start off on a better war footing but you may not have the new races willing to always help you and cause trouble. Three would be having to regain alliances and things like that again and to restart. Four would make a very interesting feature if you did start the game as a exaltated uh, pathfinder and everybody had to basically play the game as a fused ket probably similar to the synthesis ending in Mass Effect 3, where I think would be something interesting. Five would be both the Ket and Initiative Empires would have to find either a common ground to fight the enemy or fight on their own sides but end up losing themselves or losing enough wars. And that's it for that one. If there's anything here that you like the look of, of things that could potentially happen in a sequel, if you'd love to see a sequel, feel free to leave a comment down below about things you would like to see in a sequel. If anything I've said here would be something you think sounds interesting, feel free to leave a discussion below. I'd love to discuss with you further about that. If you think anything's stupid and you don't like the ideas I've written, you're certainly welcome to express your opinion there. Alternately, if you have ideas that I haven't even thought of or things you think would be good, I would love to discuss that with you below as well. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you all on the next episode.